Hi, my name is Frank. It's Friday. Time to kick back and talk music. Today I want to talk about sleeving compact discs. Is it worth it? I think it is and I will tell you why that plus opening the mail and tons more. All right, first let's talk about compact discs and whether it is worth sleeving them because I suggest it is. So part of this, my friend Mike from Vinyl Storage Solutions has developed some new outer sleeves for compact discs. He sent me over some of them because they're for sale now. But we'd actually gone out for dinner last month and we were chatting about this and he previously sent me some prototypes to try out because he knows this is something I'm into and was looking for. So that's kind of we're going to delve into that. But some history behind this is if you had asked me several years ago, Frank, is it worth sleeving your compact discs? I would have said, no, no, it's a waste. But as we're seeing fewer and fewer CDs released in the, the jewel cases, right? Like the plastic casings and we're seeing more CDs released with all cardboard packaging. I think they're called digipacks. I'm not sure, but we're seeing more and more of that. Then you have the same problems as you have with records, right? The jackets become damaged and you got to protect them. So a couple of years ago, I did start to sleeve my CDs just to protect this because it can get dinged and damaged and all sorts of stuff. And I was using these plastic sleeves I found. I can't remember where I found them, but you know, they were quite thin. They had this um, uh, sticky tab there to stick them, but these were very thin and I found that the seams would split and they, they did the job, but they weren't the best. So that's why it's kind of excited to hear that Mike had um, introduced these new outer sleeves for compact discs. So let's check it out and uh, see what these look like. Thank you, Mike at Vinyl Storage Solutions for sending these over for me to check out. I do appreciate that, man. Cheers. All right, so we got it open. Here are the sleeves. So what does this say? These are single pocket CD slash DVD sleeves. And I went to his website and I made some notes. So yeah, these are four mil single pocket CD outer sleeves with a tuckable flap. They sell 25 per pack. And for that, it's 15 bucks, which is equal to about $11 US. And according to Mike's website, these are optimized to fit almost any thick thickness of basic CD cases from jewel cases to single to the single cardboard jackets. Uh, the product has two creases on the flap, so this will be interesting. The first one is used for thin cases, and the second one is used for thicker cases. These are made from CPP, which is cast pro <laughs> I'm tongue tied. Cast polypropylene. They're made in Canada from Canadian and American made film. No recycled content. So I don't know. All that sounds pretty good to me. And as I said, I tried some prototypes. So this is one of the prototypes Mike had sent me earlier with a tuckable sleeve. I think he kind of refined the sizing a bit, but this is the kind of stuff I've been using them for, right? Here's the tool CD. Again, it's a cardboard jacket, so to protect it. I've also been using them for these Japanese CDs. Otherwise, these Obi strips just, you're going to damage them. They're not going to, they don't stay on here. They're going to get crushed and whatever. So, I mean, here's an example of something I want to sleeve. Here's a Japanese CD with the Obi strip. So, We'll try throwing that in one of these sleeves and we'll see how it works. All right, so I see there, it does have the two, the two kind of creases there. So you can fold along one or the other depending on the size of the CD case that, uh, that you have there. So let's just try this. Again, we'll try it with this Japanese pressing of uh, heaven and hell because I want to protect the Obi strip. I mean, the whole other thing is, right? What do you do with the CD? So like my records, I slip the CD into the back of them and I put it inside uh, an inner sleeve. It's again, not dissimilar to what I do with records. I don't have any more CD sleeves. So for the CDs themselves, so I do have to find that. So in this case, typically what I would like to do is remove the compact disc, put it in its own sleeve and tuck it in the back for easy access. I don't have it, so that won't be part of today's demonstration, but I need to get that. So we'll just stick this jewel case CD in here. There we go. Okay, so it fits nicely. So, you can see the two little creases there. I think I can use, yeah, so it just folds over and this one kind of 
corresponds with the top of the jewel case. So let's just tuck this in and see how it works. Okay. Yeah, so one crease corresponds with this edge of the jewel case. The second crease corresponds with that edge. So there we go. I like this. I mean, it's clear and you can, it kind of makes the artwork pop, I guess. So I think I'll continue to use these. So we got that. Now I'm curious in terms of how these would work with sort of just these thinner cardboard ones, right? It's not thick at all. So let's try it. Let's try it, dear 33 years on this Friday night. So there we go. So how, okay, we got the two, again, it's got the two seams. So I thought these seams, okay, well, it works perfectly. Again, this is with a thinner digipack. And look at that, it still fits, still fits perfect. I'm digging it. Mike, thank you for sending those over. I think I'm gonna have to order some more of these because I'm definitely gonna continue to sleeve my compact discs, especially the ones with those cardboard sleeves. Cheers, man, thank you. All right, it's time to open the mail. So this one comes from a viewer by the name of Glenn. Glenn, thank you so much for sending me what you are about to see. So he sent this, he actually sent me an email and uh, check this out. He said, hiya, Frank, for your upcoming uh, or, or back gone birthday, I was thinking I would like to gift you with a record that I would be interested in hearing a mini review of, even if just by email and not the channel. So Glenn is living in Germany, but he actually found an eBay seller in Canada that sent me this record. Check this out. This is the best of Julie London. This is an original pressing from when is this? In the 1960s. So this is this is uh, interesting because this is not something I would typically uh, listen to, and I wasn't really familiar with Julie London. So if you don't know Julie London, she was a singer and actress. Some of you may may remember her as Nurse Dixie McCall in the television series Emergency in the 1970s. Uh, Julie recorded over 30 albums of pop and jazz standards between 1955 and 1969. Her recording of Crimea River was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 2001. She passed away in 2000 at 74 years old. This is a Canadian mono pressing from, okay, from 1962 on Liberty Records. And again, it's a compilation of some of her best stuff. This album cover is striking, isn't it? I mean, she was a gorgeous, gorgeous lady. I will show you the um, the label because this is a really cool label as well. This is the old Liberty label. So classic, right? So this came, it was clean, but I gave it another clean uh, as well. I put it in this anti-static sleeve. So, I mean, what is this? What do I think of Julie London? Again, this is not something I was overly or at all familiar with before Glenn sent this to me. So I've listened to it several times. And to me, this is the kind of music, when I listen to this, I picture kind of going to like, an out of the way basement bar slash cabaret on a Friday night and the cabaret or lounge is full of smoke and you go in there and you, you sip on like a scotch on the rocks or a, a classic cocktail like an old fashioned or a whiskey sour and, and this is the kind of music you're hearing. Um, I would call it vocal jazz, um, but Glenn, I asked Glenn how he would classify this, and he says she's kind of a, a jazz singer, kind of a torch singer. Uh, a torch song, if you're not familiar with that terminology, is a traditional or a sentimental love song. Um, he said she's kind of a standards singer, but really she is her own animal. To me, her voice, her styling, her phrasing, and overall sound doesn't have any easy counterparts. And I would agree with all of this. It's not the kind of music you listen to when you want to get pumped up, but it is definitely something, as I said, on a Friday night when you want to chill out with a scotch on the rocks or a whiskey on the rocks. It's something you would put on and something I would put on. So thank you very much, Glenn, for introducing me to the world of Julie London. This will be a cherished part of my record collection, something I'm going to hang on to for a long time. And uh, I'm actually going to check out more of Julie's catalog just based on what I've heard here. So Glenn, thank you very much. You rock, man. I appreciate you um, introducing me to something new and helping expand my musical horizons. Cheers, my friend. All right, 33 is that is today's Friday update. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you dug it, I would appreciate a quick thumbs up. I will be back again in a couple of days. Until then, keep on spinning.